it really was like the catalyst for a lot um, to come after that. Um, the highlight for me of the race symposium was Amy getting up in front of the whole program and saying, you know what I think? I don't believe in colorblind casting. I believe in colorful casting. what really created this this unrest was because she would get up in front of all these black people and say i want colorful casting but where's the color at you weren't casting the black people unless there was one or two or we were your favorite house negro there was literally no colorful casting i, I actually it's it's funny to think she would even say that because it wasn't represented in the casting at the school at the time. So it just felt like such a conflicting idea. Like, you say this, but do you actually believe it? Which is no. So we decided after this meeting for our, our Pace New Musicals, which is where we do a, a lot of new musicals by new musical theater writers. And then we also had some established, you know, composers come in and and maybe they tested a show on us or we did a workshop of their show. Um, and we invited John Bacchino, who I truly was like such a fan of, of his music. I, I felt like I identify with his scores a lot, with his melodies, his harmonies. I felt like it was one of those composers I felt like, oh my God, like he's writing for me. You know, I felt like his songs were songs I felt the most confident singing, the most impactful performing and um i was fucking thrilled you know i i sang a john bacchino song in front of him for the audition and i knew i nailed it you know he got up and clapped i was like i know i nailed that this was like something i had dreamed about since i was a kid um and the castles came out and literally his cast is all white and i was confused because you know, John McKino writes, you know, music for like singers. And I, I was like, oh, there aren't like a lot of like strong singers that he casts. Um, so it was just very obvious that it had to do with them being white. Um, and that, that was like such a blow. I just, I think like, I think that killed the like, the like kid in me that like, was one of the moments where it was like, it just, it was like, you know, when you find out like Santa Claus isn't real, it's like, fuck, like, this is really sad. You know, someone who I really admired is um, just as bad as the rest of them. Um, and that was just, I think finding out also, finding out from Amy's, ex like specifically, her saying to me, Oh, he, he only wanted a white cast. It was like, damn. When I talked to you before about opportunities, yep. I think that is the biggest example I can think of. Okay. That, and, and I don't think that has to do with race. I don't think I it does. I just okay. don't. Okay. Because you know what? They, the writers of, of Dogfight, mm -hmm. fought me. They yeah. fought me. Yeah. They want an entirely white cast.
Like I could, you couldn't do, we couldn't prepare again. Like this idea of like, you couldn't work any fucking harder. Couldn't work any harder. And it just doesn't matter. If you aren't, she was saying like, if you aren't white and that's not what they want, it's just not gonna, it's a, it's a wrap for you. It's a fucking wrap. It's not happening. No matter how much, how great you are, how good you are, how well you nail them, their material, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And she confirmed that. And she, I think also I felt like we had had such a personal relationship and it reminded me of in Dogfight where it was like, like if you really cared about your black students and you really like wanted them to succeed or win, why would you allow them to work with these people who don't find value in them? Why would you invite these white people to come and, and pretty much take care of these black students when they don't find value in these black students and their talent? Why would, why would, you, why would you do that? Like, do you, do you not care about the black students? Because it seems like you don't. And again, like by junior year, that message was becoming so loud and clear by her actions. Because that production wasn't fucking colorful. The fact that Amy was facilitating these white professionals um, to come into our space who don't value black voices um, really, really cut deep. And I, it reminds me of, of sophomore year when we, we did a, a class with uh, Jason Robert Brown. Hi, Jason. Um, and we, we asked him, you know, we, we, we asked him about, you know, writing for Black Voices and, 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 and the lack of work and the lack of material for us and how he fit into that um, and how he could maybe be someone to change that. And he responded that he only writes for what he knows. He only writes for white Jewish men. Um, I was like, well... There's a lot of black people who made your songs famous. Did you, was you just using them? Were you just using Audra to make your song the, like the best? Like, I'm confused here. Like, you're telling me that you don't write for us, but my reference of a lot of major Tony Award winning black artists who have not just done justice of your work, but have, has elevated your work, but you don't write for us? And you're telling that to a bunch of black kids in a program? I just want to be clear about that because that, that again was just like, again, the administration just beating our asses by bringing these people in who just don't give a fuck about us. And he was very unapologetic about it. He was just actually very matter of fact about it. This is what I do. This is who I write for. White, Jewish, men. If you don't fit in that, can't help you. Um, I had a, a, a dear friend who wrote a, a Pace new musical and they had the chance to premiere it um, at Pace and that was, we were happy for them. Um, and I think, you know, they, they were white and I, I assumed that our relationship would really inspire them to um, open up their casting to more students of color, give them a chance to, to learn and grow and, and have that exposure. And I remember her telling me that Amy asked her after she, you know, they, they put all their cast lists, um, other, other headshots, you know, together in, in a big pile. And they kind of just look at their cast and see what it looks like, you know, the faces, the names, whatever, whatever. And she, she revealed to me that Amy asked her, because her cast had a lot of students of color, if, if it was too much. She said, are there, are there too many? You think there's too much color in your cast or too much, too much uh, of that in your cast? And... I just, I couldn't believe, again, that this was the kind of behavior she thought was acceptable, especially being behind the table. Like, this is a conversation she thought that at least I would never hear, or that the white people, the white uh, gatekeepers would keep amongst themselves. And again, it was just another example of her making it loud and clear about how she feels about the idea of casting and casting people of color. Because again, it wasn't colorful <laughs> at all. So 
it was announced we were doing the pajama game. If you don't know, it's a uh, a standard from um, the golden age of musical theater. Um, and, you know, it was directed by a new white gay director that we had hired. Um, and we were hesitant, but, you know, we we're going to go for it, audition and, and, and try to, you know, get the chance to to learn and grow. And I mean, it was pretty clear from the breakdowns, the intention of the show, which I think right away, like caused, um, it caused tension. The breakdown received for the show. Mind you, this is to pace. Pace, that's so diverse. So many people of color. Uh, says, as for the tone of the piece, we're sticking with traditional American musical comedy here. No tricks, no crazy concepts. This is a traditional musical comedy taking place in 1953. And I intend to keep it that way. And it's really the, the I intend to keep it that way, which got me. It was like, oh, so you know what you want. You, you're telling us you want white, non-black, Jim Crow, and you intend to keep it that way. Got it. Very clear. Casts go up. Shocker. It's all white people. Sorry. There are two black people in the cast. Two. So there, 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 there's our, our house Negroes there. In addition to the person who sent this breakdown, Mr. J.B. Mercanti, there were like a lot of other instances where I felt like there was so much harm, like calling students, other students' name, my eval feedback, J.B. literally lit the... I sit down for my feedback. The first thing I hear from JB's mouth, from anyone's mouth is, how do you think your evaluation went, Chris? I mean, well, I, I'm so sorry. And I, I remember being like, shaking my head. Don't apologize. Living your nasty truth. Um, side note, Chris was another black student in my class who we are nothing alike. We sound nothing alike. I think me and Chris bring completely different things into the room. So it was just another microaggression that we experience of like, you really don't look at us, you know, specifically. You look at us as the same. That you can call someone who's been in this program for three years another student's name. Me? Crazy. Also, we brought JV on because we needed, like as Saidu mentioned, we needed a change in the acting department. Mark and Bill were awful. And this is someone I literally fought for because he promised us he would be the leader we needed. He would help us get the things done that we wanted to achieve. And he also told us that, you know, we could come to him with any issues and that he was a real resource for us. But I think the, the cast list of Pajama Game was the last straw. I think for, at least for me, I think it was the last time I was going to let an all white production happen at Pace when literally Amy Rogers is telling me every meeting that she knows, she knows the optics aren't good. Cue the receipts. Because I cannot stand behind race being an issue in regards to casting. Absolutely. I just can't. Like, Absolutely. I'm like, I've given a million opportunities in a million different ways. Yes. And yes, I can see the optics yeah. of it on paper yeah. as we're doing great well and that yeah. has all the people yeah. of color in it mm -hmm. and they're doing a sura. Yeah. But you know what? We are doing great well and great well does take place in New York City. And they wouldn't, they, the, the writer of a sura only wanted white people and I have nothing to do with yeah. that. I have no, so I think that's the, the casting thing and the people being being cast over and over again, mm -hmm. I think that's a whole separate issue. Okay. Because I because I kind of, I for some reason feel like they're related. I don't. And, okay. and, and I wonder what can happen if we look at it as two issues. Okay. Because 
The sword of three. Okay. If we look at it, and then of course there's the big picture, Overall. which is what you're seeing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I need to break it down. I need to break okay. it down and look at this in mm-hmm. little boxes because mm-hmm. otherwise, like my mind is gonna explode. Okay. Because like I didn't sleep last night. Like I'm trying okay. to like, I'm like my fucking program is falling apart. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like I've done everything I can. Yeah. To make sure that everybody feels seen. Yeah. I just. I can I can sleep at night knowing that. Anyway, back okay. backing up. Okay. So I think we have three things. I think we have. Let's start with sure. Okay. Okay. I think we have class. Okay. Which is one one issue. Okay. Okay. I think we have casting. Okay. Which another and then I think we have race. Okay. Which is another issue and okay. then I think this whole thing right. is under the well right. I actually think the whole thing is under the umbrella of race a race but like. I think it's still a third thing. Okay. 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 So if we div- divvy this up, mm-hmm. if we divvy up casting mm-hmm. and understand that mm-hmm. the optics look like I put all the black people in one show and then everybody else is white. Mm-hmm. But not just that, because like I don't want that to be like the, the only That okay. and the yeah. same people are cast over and over again. Yeah. She is aware of how it looks, but she that's not what it is. But that's what we see. The cast is all white minus two token black people. What are you trying to say here? And I think the backlash from that, that cast list within our community is what also really set a tone because all the white kids felt like they deserved to be in the show. The white kids felt like the black kids were jealous, that we were envious that we couldn't be in the show, that it wasn't fair to attack them. And Amy, again, reinforced these feelings. She reinforced to the white kids that yeah, we are mad and that we're jealous and that we just, it's all about pajama game because we didn't get the parts. And I think that's when our class, um, that's when our class really started to, to really racially shift. Um, you notice that the white kids who got all the parts didn't want to talk about this to the black kids. And it made us feel like what we were saying and, and how we felt was unimportant and didn't matter. And the fact that our faculty was reinforcing that made it feel even worse. Like, it was just like, wow, we're really fucking suffering here and nobody wants to hear us. Nobody wants to understand. Nobody is trying to meet us like anywhere in the middle. They're just like, you're mad. So just stop. I mean, fast forward to when we see Pajama Game and everything we thought about it being, you know, completely whitewashed and completely um, traditional, American traditional, I'm sorry for being honest, was just true. You know, it was all white. And we noticed that the only two black people in the show were literally paired together. Every scene, every dance number, they were just used as props to be tokens. And it was... Also embarrassing that that's where we were. Like, we're like Pace, the Island of Misfit Toys, we're so diverse, yet we're still, you know, holding to like traditional American standards in musical theater. That doesn't make any sense. It, there, there was a clear disconnect and we were gonna call it out. I felt comfortable calling out these issues just because of, you know, my own personal relationship with, you know, advocating for myself and, I, you know, I, I went to Amy and I, you know, I said to her, like, something is up. Like, the cast list doesn't reflect our student body. I said, why, why are all the white kids getting, like, all these opportunities to learn and grow and we aren't? I was like, the excuse of, like, us not having the talent isn't there. The excuse of us not having the work ethic isn't there. Um, What what do you have to say for this? Um, And she completely turned the whole thing around on me. Um, All of a sudden, I was this angry black man. Um, I was angry that I didn't get the part in Pajama Game. I was, um, I was bitter um, in that, Not only was I all these things to her, these were things that my white classmates had to say about me that she took word of mouth for. 
she took them at complete face value that if that's how they felt, that's who I was. Completely ignoring the relationship that her and I had prior to these things being said, she was like, yeah, you are a coal house. And, you know, this meeting was recorded, Amy, as I'm sure you know, because I knew Amy was very, very, um, she's like a wizard with her words. She will talk circles around you and she'll manipulate you. And especially if you're black and she'll make you feel little. And I noticed her doing this to me in the past and I, I needed the recording there to to help to look back and know what was actually happening to me, what was actually being said to me, and how I was being manipulated in the moment. And, and it just was that. I think the second she called me Cole House was when I realized what position she wanted me to play in this story about race at Pace. And, you know, Cole House dies. Cole House gets shot at the end of the story. And I kept thinking like, so that's who I am. I, I speak up and then I get silenced by dying. Is that like, are you saying that's my fate? What do you like, what is being said here? I don't think that the, I think your class is gonna, is gonna splinter and disintegrate. Something's gotta change. I agree. And I don't know what to do because I'm not there. Yeah. And I am just, I'm just the ears to what's happening. I agree. And there's no question to me, though, that you are at the anchor of mm -hmm. this, right? You are playing Cole House in this play, right? Sure. Yeah, sure. but, like, yeah, the yeah. idea that, yeah. like, yeah. it, is, it yeah. is his story, it is yes. his fire, yes. it is his absolutely, whatever. absolutely. But something's going to have to give. With, he with, is... With, with every, with, and, and honestly... I let it go from being about me mm -hmm. to it to cause seeing it around me. Mm -hmm. That's sort of why I like use the Cole House reference. Because I, yeah, I, Cole yeah. House go goes from it being about him to yes, it being about everybody. Yeah. Why. I'm saying absolutely, but I'm saying like I like I feel like it's just so easy to be like let's all gang up and be like he's like he's it because like I'm a target mm -hmm. and I'm okay, and I've always been mm -hmm. and I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. I just want it to be known that that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And I will take responsibility for it. I don't it. think you're a target. I, think you're, I don't think you're a target. I don't. I've grown to be. I, well, I think that you put yourself in the place of being a target. Yeah. Because you're Cole House, and Cole House mm -hmm. is a target. Mm -hmm. And. But I feel like I. I but Cole House I also feel like, like burns in the building. But do, so. you, but do you. I think, again, what hurt the most was that Amy had decided that I was the linchpin of the issue of race in the program, that it all started with me. It all was because of me. And that somehow me speaking up and me <clears throat> standing up for myself and my peers was the problem. She had taken, she didn't want to take any accountability for any part she played in this, this situation. I even brought her cast lists. I brought her numbers and she said, I know the optics don't look good, but I think this is, I think this is you. I think you're just angry. I think you're just mad. And, and I'm pretty sure you're the linchpin of this issue. And I think for a little bit of the meeting, like that's all I could hear and repeat was like, you're the linchpin of this. This is all because of you. This all started with you. And then, and then she started to attack like my character and, and my peers, you know, she, she's like, I hear about, I hear about you guys in class. I hear about how you support each other. It, it's dividing people. The way you guys, the way you guys say things to each other, it divides the class. And again, I was like, wow, so 
you've really been, you, you, you've had your ear close to the white kids. Like, it's very obvious. Like, it's obvious that she didn't care about how we felt. And, and she, like, pulled the, she pulled the ultimate, like, white woman in power, I feel like, to me, by being like, well, can I, can I, can I recommend you in the professional world? Can I tell Sarah Bryans that she can, she can use you? Because I don't know. I don't know, Will. I don't know if I can tell them that it's safe to cast you. I don't know. I just don't know. Everyone else wants to lie and, sure. and, 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 and kiss ass sure. and, and say what they think the teacher wants to hear. And I mean... Kissing That's ass is no, it's not. But it's not a bad strategy. No, kissing ass it's is not a, a bad good, strategy. Kissing ass is a good strategy if you want another job. I have no, like, absolutely. That's the other thing that I think about when I'm thinking of training you. Okay. Is that like, right now, mm -hmm. I feel like people, not because of your color, mm -hmm. but I feel like because of your energy, mm -hmm. people are scared to cast you. Interesting. Because you're mad and loud. No, I love loud. Yeah, I mean. But I need you to figure out mm -hmm. how to make sure mm -hmm. you can keep your integrity mm -hmm. and your job. I'm just gonna say though, I and I can agree you keep with you. Your and your job. Absolutely. I just I think it's very sad that people feel that way. Mm -hmm. I do. And but I, I, but I need you to know that it's that it is. It's the reality. It's and the reality. Okay, and, I'm okay with and it's it. and it's and it's not like it's just one person. No, and I agree with you. And it's not that it's just the students. Uh, oh, I that's one hundred percent what I what I'm talking about. But like, how could I can Sarah cast you? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Do you promise me? Absolutely. Do you promise me that the energy you have in that 100%. classroom that you're not throwing shade? A hundred percent. But you have to. I mean, it's interesting that like that's being said because like. That whole class is throwing shade. The whole class is throwing shade. Take responsibility for you. But do you? So. But do you? But do you feel like you're? Would you cast me? Are you? Do you feel safe to cast me? Honestly. And if not, I'm really curious on why not. If I hadn't, if this was pre, mm -hmm. um, pajama game. Sure. The answer would be yes. Okay. In a heartbeat. So why? So why is that? Because of. Because I don't feel like if I was in the real world, I would call mm -hmm. references, which I do. Yeah. I don't think I could get a reference on you that would, would make me feel confident. Okay, but after knowing me, though, do you know what I mean? I don't know. Well, I just I'm really, I'm really upset. I understand. I'm upset that the program feels splintered. Yeah, I agree. And I'm upset that it feels like I'm upset that you're so hurt. Yeah. And I feel like there is nothing more that I could have done to make it so you would not feel that way. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And I cannot take responsibility for the only person that can do that is you. Yeah. And it just it makes it makes me really sad. I agree. It, that that it's gotten to this spot, I and agree. it makes me sad that I don't know what to do about it. I agree. Because honestly. Casting you as the lead in fucking the, in whatever the fucking show is, I think if that had happened, I don't think we would be here. I don't know. I just think you're so mad. I don't know. It's. I don't think I'm mad. I'm not mad. I'm hurt. And I am. It's. It's just interesting because like I work my ass off. I really do. Mm -hmm. Like I hear anyone says, I work my ass off mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. and I never get any sort of accolades for that. I don't cry about it. Mm -hmm. I don't come here and complain about mm -hmm. it. I don't bitch about mm -hmm. it. I deal with it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the second I open my mouth, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. It's what happens. Mm -hmm. Because people don't want to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. They get upset. And I I smile and I and I sing back up and I'm supportive and I'm nice and I'm there. But like I I'm not gonna show for it. Mm -hmm. I don't. And I feel like that is the truth. And I, I would never want, I would, if anyone who knows me would never think that I would have anything, hatred, hatred at all, I mean, to say it technically, at all. Then how can we take this hurt and change it? Because I, I guarantee know. you that a role is not going to do it. I don't think, a, I don't, I never, I don't think a role will do it. I never thought it, has 
has never been about the role. It's not about the role. And I think that's also something that I want everyone to understand, that it's not about a role. I've been acting my entire life. It's not about a role. I don't care. I've played a million roles. I've, like, this is my life. I started acting when I was six. It's not about a role. It's, it's, about, it's about opportunity, and it's about being, like, who I am. People don't get it. Like, being fucking black in the country sucks. And it really sucks. And I walk around with that every day. And I fucking come in the room and smile, and I'm supportive. And because I have an opinion, and I'm open about it, like, it, it's taken as hatred. And it's taken as, like, anger. Mm -hmm. And that's hurtful. I know really empowered black people that, like... I agree, that, I agree. That are able to live in the world. Like, when I, I, when I look at, when I look at Brittany, mm -hmm. right, who I just, like, totally look up to, just yeah. as a human being, his soul is glows with gold. He is a spectacular person. And he has figured out how to, I don't know, like, he was so mad that I would make him sing, make them dream. Yeah. And now he's making a shit ton of money. Absolutely. And he looks at his as an honor. Yeah. Like, He's in, he was in fucking Fortress of Solitude, yeah. and he was back up, and he was a thug, and he was yeah. like all those things Absolutely. that like make you mad, that would make yeah. anybody stereotypically mad, yeah. but he's figured out a way to do it with honor, you know, and, and to I be get like... That. And I get and I understand that 100%, and I, I feel like that is something I'm also figuring out. Yeah. That like fucking got me, because I was like, so you're going to hurt... You're going to hurt me. Like, you're going to decide that you're going to take away my career. Because you don't want to take responsibility for a problem that you've caused. And, like, I just was like, damn, like, all the sacrifice that, like, it took for me to be there. All the fucking bullshit I went through to, like, stay in school, to be here, to be a good student, to, to do it was all like turned around in this one moment where she literally threatened to, to blacklist to me. After the meeting with Amy where I left in tears, um, she called our class to have a follow-up meeting where she told us we were a fractured unit and that if we didn't like how things were going in her program, that we could leave. She literally said, if you don't like how things are here, you can leave. Please leave. She says, please leave. And it was clear who she was talking to. She was talking to the students of color. And she screamed at us about how we're fucking up and how we're assholes and how if we just like weren't happy, we can just go. And that she was requiring us to write letters. And then I think we have race, okay. which is another issue. And okay. then I think this whole thing right. is under the, well, right. I actually think the whole thing is under the umbrella of race, a race, but like, I think it's still a third thing. Okay. 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 But I do feel like this meeting is necessary and this meeting has been at least a semester, if not more, in the works. I feel like this class is fractured. 
the amount of weights that I saw, the amount of absences that I saw, like, what the fuck are you doing? Why aren't you going to class? Why aren't you showing up on time? And then why are you throwing back in my face I'm paying for it? Like, fuck you! Like, what can we do? So much of it is, is about you. So, so uh, your, own, your own unit that is fractured. I can't fix that. If you're smoking every night, you're a fucking addict. Fix it. Get over it. This is my reputation. This is my program. And you're teaching our faculty like this? You're treating them like this? How embarrassing. How embarrassing. Go to class. Give a shit. Stop smoking. Be kind to each other. And if you don't want to do any of those things, please leave. Don't shit. Don't shit in my house. Don't do it. Honor it. Or, or get out. Get out and throw the I pay for this somewhere else. Or get out and, you, and not care about how much you smoke. Or get out and treat your, treat your other teachers with total fucking disrespect. Bye. You all need to write me a letter about what this meeting was, what it, how it affected you, and what positive changes you're going to make. If I don't get the letter, you're not allowed to audition. We will not cast you. So I need it from every single one of you. About what you heard and what you're going to tangibly do to fix it. Understood? Say yes. 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 At this point, I don't really feel like I want to open it up to the floor because I expect to get what I need <coughs> in writing. She asked us to write these letters to explain why we were a fractured unit. What, what was the reasoning? What led up to it? And all the black kids obviously address the racial problems within the program. And she responded with a follow-up meeting. In Amy's follow-up meeting with us, she read our letters. Um, she had no response to any of the letters that the black kids wrote. She claimed she would uh, do three things. She would not let guest directors get final say in casting, that she would step in. She promised that we would do no more race-specific shows. And she promised that she was taking this seriously and she was going to get an outside team to come help work on the race relations within the program. All lies. So by the end of junior year, you know, post meetings, post pajama game, post all of the drama, um, my relationship with Amy was, was done. I mean, at that point she had she had, um, you know, made me the poster boy for angry black man. And she made that pretty clear to my peers that I was just angry and mad. And she, I blame her for, for, for fueling the fire within my peers because it pretty much turned every white student in my class against me. Um, no one wanted to talk to me. No one wanted to hear me out. Everyone just kind of wrote me off. And it, it, was, um, it was shit. It was such shit. And I felt, even though I know I wasn't alone, I, I felt really, really, really alone. I felt really othered. Um, and it hurt that this was supported by the faculty, that the faculty completely supported making me feel this way. And they felt justified. Um, that really hurt. It was really fucked up. I felt really hopeless. Yeah, I felt really hopeless. I felt like I had no choice but to be this like angry black man that she wanted me to be. I felt like it was like either disappear, which I wasn't going to do, or, like, play this sick fucking role of being, like, Kanye. And, and I did. You know, I, I think I didn't have the strength to, to just, like, hold on and to, like, plant my feet in a way that helped me keep all of my integrity. But I, um, I, I played into it. And I, you know, I was like, okay, you want to see it? 
I'll fucking bring it. And I'll, I'll give you my wrath. And you're going to hear us, whether you like it or not. And I think the line in the sand was definitely drawn. And it felt like there was, like, no coming back. Like, it felt like we were at war. It felt like we were fully at war. And there were sides. And I knew going into senior year, it was going to be a battle. So going into senior year, um, it was a fucking battlefield. I mean, the second we got to our performance class with Bob Klein, it was obvious that there were such sides. I mean, the black kids and our, our white allies sat on one side. And then the white kids and the white passing kids who, you know, supported the administration sat on the other side. And it was fucking ugly. I mean, the black kids and the white kids were in complete competition with material. Uh, we wouldn't clap for each other. I remember when I would perform, I would see the white leading men on their phones, they'd often be sitting on the floor um, and they would never clap for me. It, it felt like, I literally felt like I was like performing on like hot coal or like I was like performing on like snakes cause I was like, you know, at the tension and the, the energy in the room was just ugly. There was a lot of like hate and I, I felt it, you know, I, I felt like I, you know, didn't have many people to look to for support. And what was worse about it is that Bob Klein and, and Amy, they completely played into this. They, there was never a moment where they wanted to help us get back to where we were. I mean, we, our class was so close. We started off with so much love and support for each other. We grew so much together, going through classes, going through acting together. I mean, we, we're really such a, such a, um, such a close knit class. And now to see that we are so divided down the middle and that the faculty actually used that. They used that to silence what the black kids were saying. They used all those white kids, those like the children to further silence us, to scare us, to crush me. I mean, I felt like she used sorry, they used those, those, those kids to, to crush me. And at some point they did, you know, at some point I felt like I had, I couldn't speak anymore. I just had to like go out swinging. And, um, and even down to, you know, everyone knows that in Bob's class, Bob likes to drink with his students. You know, we're seniors, it's chill. We can drink with Bob, whatever, whatever. I didn't feel comfortable drinking with Bob after class. I don't trust you. Sorry, I don't trust Bob. And I, and I definitely didn't trust Bob because he would listen to everything Amy said about me. And he made that very clear to me from the first day. And everyone, Bob's was a party. All the white kids would show up to Bob's drunk, drinking, fucked up, and whatever. And Bob thought it was cute, it was funny. You would get a Jägermeister ticket if you were so great at your performance that day. And, you know, it was clear to me um, on a specific day that those rules don't apply to me. Um, I, with another student, we, after we performed in class, we came in for the last half an hour with a cocktail, we brought in we brought in some whiskey in our drinks and we were going to just sit there. We're done performing and just watch, have a drink. And then maybe we go with the rest of the class to drink with Bob. And um, Bob caught us and I got fucking flamed in front of the entire class. Bob screamed at me. He asked if he could smell my drink. He kicked me out of class. And what happened to my white friend who did the same thing? Nothing. He was like, hey, buddy, you okay? What's going on here? Understanding. Oh, oh, okay, what's going on? What, what is this? What? With me? Get out of my class. Get, how dare you? I'm telling the dean. And I was like, okay. 
I, I didn't know before, I obviously know now. You know, this, it only, I, I'm only held accountable, just me. I couldn't move an inch out of line, an inch. And it just really, from that moment on, I just think I really shut down from being myself um, in, in such a, a crucial time where you're about to showcase for, you know, industry professionals and, and people in the industry. I, you know, I, I really felt so silenced. I felt, I felt so like trapped. I felt like they, they fucking like trapped me in a cage and I just like could literally not use my voice at all. Um, and mentally I felt the same way. Just, I felt like I had lost myself completely by the end of senior year. And it was all because of their treatment. I think what also was um, really insulting was how the white students, their voices were heard and ours just weren't. I mean, Corey, Giacoma, Adam Levy, they were, they were the white male gods and they could say whatever they want and feel however they wanted and it was validated. I mean, these boys were joking about white privilege. They thought it was a joke. They thought that we were being dramatic by talking about white privilege. And when they were pressured to talk about their privilege or speak about these issues, they literally reported it to Amy and she took their word for gospel. And she literally took everything they said and used that against us, verbatim. The amount of microaggressions that we witnessed from these white male <laughs> classmates of ours was just, just a daily occurrence. I mean, I remember when we, it was announced we were having a symposium, uh, Mr. Adam Levy literally said, great. Now I have to go to a meeting where I have to be reminded of how racist I am. And just like the fact that he said that, I think just really rings true how deep the, how deep the white kids were allowed to behave like this. Like, I think it needs to be understood that there was, they were never reprimanded for this behavior. There was never like a, okay, you can't say this because this is hurtful. This is hurtful for the black kids to hear. You could never, there was never that. It was like, Will, you can't say these things because you're hurting the white kids. The white kids are upset that you're calling out their privilege. The white kids are upset that, that you're making them aware of how they've gotten things because of their privilege. That was what was clear to me. Coping was, uh, was really tough. I like self-medicated a lot with weed. I, I, I couldn't, there was a point in senior year I just couldn't go to class, like not like completely stoned because I was like, I was like scared. I was scared. I was like, I don't know if I have the strength to like fight these white people who I felt were so harmful to me on the daily basis. Like I, I felt like I had to smoke just to like stand in the space to be to be okay, to not like cry, to not like, to not run away, to not just walk out. You know, I, I felt like at the time I, that like I had gotten some sort of strength from smoking and, and being able to like silence that side of me that was like, like, you know, run away or, or any of those things. And, and sex, you know, I felt like I just, was so reactive to being like aggressed every day and then being like, okay, I need to do something sexual that will help me, you know, release this tension or, or relieve me or feel loved or feel wanted or feel appreciated um, because I wasn't getting any of that. I was getting the complete opposite. I was just getting shit on every day by my peers and by the faculty. I think I've realized personally, how negatively impactful these white institutions and these white people in power are to students of color. Um, and I, I think the change came in like two parts. I think 
this post school change was that they um, like really broke my spirit and they really stole my joy in musical theater and they took away all the love and the faith that I had in this industry and the people in it. Just, I, they took all my hope for me and they left me with like a shell of myself and I just was just living. Um, and I think uh, I had to kind of rebuild myself and um, find new language for like who I am and, and discovering like who I really am and what I want out of life and like, and not letting history repeat itself when it comes to, to this kind of racism. I think you know this, but um, you really tried to crush me. Like, you really tried. And not, no, there's no little effort. You went full out, destroy me. And you got really fucking close. Um, but I'm here. <laughs> and I'm talking to you, Amy, Bob, JV, Corey, Adam, and all the rest of you followers who I guess didn't know any better, but you got real fucking close. And you need to know how wrong you were for that. Really fucking wrong. Because I'd be fucking damned if you do this shit to more students and make more young queer black boys feel how I fucking felt at the time I left school. Like to take away all that from them, you'll never do it again. Not as long as I live. You might as well cold house me right now. And that's period. I think like having to start therapy was like the focal point of, of my healing from this process. But I think realizing as you know, far as we've gotten with CR Truce that um, there's so much more healing to go. And that um, I've healed a lot of my, of my pain from the faculty um, for some reason. I think I've been able to process all of your insecurities and all of the things that were, are fucked up about you that I know was only, you were only scared of me. I'm aware of that. I think it's been really tough for me to let go of some of my issues with my peers because I felt like we all um, started at the same place. And I know that there was once so much love for each other. And it really, it really still hurts me that it was so lost and it was so misconstrued and that all of you people that I once helped so deeply and, and genuinely cared about turned on me in such a like nasty racist way. And it's just sad that I, that I've gained that, that weariness, that fear. Um, and I don't know how, if I'll ever be able to let that go, but I'm, I think that's something I'm processing.